Hello, this is Alexey. I continue to publish video tutorials and reviews. If this video will be useful to you, please subscribe to my channel and click on the like button under the video. In this way you will help other users to find necessary information and my channel will be run better. All links from the video can be found in the description below. In previous free video tutorials we create website on Joomla 4 from scratch. We used only free extensions. The result was a business website which was uploaded to the hosting. In this video tutorial we'll talk about Joomla general configuration. It contains quite a few very important settings that affect SEO, security and entry site speed. Some of the settings are only need in specific cases and some of them are useful for all or almost all sites. For example, I use caching, mail and captcha settings on most client sites. And I use cookie, web server or proxy settings just a few times. Settings in the general configuration affects entry site. In case of incorrect configuration you can damage your website or even completely break it down. Let's go to global configuration and start from the site name where we can see it. To see it, for example, here in the browser tab, go to the site name in page title and select, for example, after, update the page, here it is, or before. Here it is. But I don't recommend to use this setting. I recommend leave by default, just new, and do not insert site name automatically in the title, because the title is very important for SEO and site name is may not be so important for SEO. The next option is site offline. As you can see my site is working well and now I can choose site offline and we can see that the site is offline. Also you can change for example custom message, we can change offline image, or we can use site language default message. It's the same. Now it's back online. To see how the next option front end editing works, let's log in as administrator. Here we can see this icon, we can click on it and we can edit module here. In previous video tutorial we already work with modules and see how we can edit but in this way you can edit modules just in front end. Also we can select model and menus, update the page and we can see some editing icons here and we can edit menu items from the front end. But I prefer to use none. In this case there will be no icons and it much more convenient for me. With the help of default editor you can select editor for example for articles. I'm talking about this editor. In previous video tutorial we already work with it, but if you have several editors you can select it here and they will be dis displayed by default. With the captcha we already work in previous video tutorial. As you already know, in Joomla 5 there is no built-in captcha plugin, so you need to install some 30 part one. About two 30 part one plugins you can learn from our previous video tutorial. The next is site meta description. Here you can enter meta description that will be displayed by default for all pages without meta description. 
For example, let's add some meta description, save it, update the page. Here we won't see anything, but here we can see our description. Also, if we go, for example, here and look at our code, we also can see our default description. This is not a very good idea to apply the same meta description for all pages. I recommend you to add meta description to menu items and articles for each page. The next option is robot. You can select some robot rules. For example, you can pre prevent your site from being indexed by Google and other search engines. For example, update the page, look at the code, and here we can see no index, no follow. You can read about this option more in Google documentation, but now just know where you can change it. Content rights. You can enter, for example, some description here, update the page, look at the code, and we can see meta name rights by default. The next sentence is very important. Be careful. If you change this setting when your site is already been indexed by Google, it will change all your URL addresses. So, be very careful and let's see how it this sentence works. For example, let's go to help or it's better to blog. Welcome to your blog. As you can see, we can we have index.php here in the URL address. Let's disable it. For example, if, if I enable this option and won't rename my htaccess.txt to .htaccess, then my site won't be work. For example, my home page is working fine, but when I click on any other page, I will see error. So, let's do these actions. This is my website root folder. Here we can see ihtaccess.txt and we need to rename it to .htaccess. Now let's update our page and go to blog. We can see it work fine and we can see that there is no index.php. Also, let's add some suffix to URL, for example like this. Update the page, go to blog. We can see blog.html and we can see that the dot html is appear in every url address. Also, you can disable all of these options. Go to home. The home page won't change and now we go to blog and we can see that our url address become something like this. That's not very search engine friendly and not even user friendly. So, I recommend you to use this option, search engine friendly URLs, and this option, use URL rewrite. But remember, if your site were already indexed by Google and other search engine, don't change these options, because this will change all URL address on the website. Also, here we can see Unicode alias option, but you will need to use it only if you want to show URL addresses in, for example, Ukraine or Russian language. For example, here we can see blog and we can enable this option. Go to our menu, find our blog and write it not in English, but in Ukraine. For example, like this. Now we can update our page, go here, and we can see that the blog become blog in Ukraine language. 
By default I do not recommend to do that, but if you need and understand what are you doing, just do it. On the next system tab we can see debug options. This is for advanced user, but we can enable it. We can enable debug language and we can see debug information here and here. In the next video tutorial we will work with languages, but with this option you can ena enable debug information if you understand what you're doing or if your programmer asks you to enable it. The next group of settings is system catch. By default is disabled, but you can enable conversive catching or progressive catching. What is the catching? When someone or something goes to your site, the Joomla build pages from database and files. When you, for example, click update or go to some link, Joomla building this page with data from database and data from the files. But for this operation Joomla needs some time. Also this operation is loading your server. So if you enable, for example, conversive catching, nothing happens here, but if someone go to your page that already catch, Joomla doesn't build it from the scratch. It shows the page from the catch folder without building it, so it's much more better for speed and web server loading. If you need to clean catch, go to catch and select delete all. Here we can see there are two system catch conversive and progressive. Progressive catch contains more information in catch so it can speed up your site even more better than conversive catch. But progressive catch sometimes can break your site functionality. So I prefer to use conver conversive catch but you can just test your site with conversive and progressive catch and decide which one is better for you. As for catch time, I prefer to set up for example one day, not 50 minutes. What does the catch time mean? For example, someone visits this page, it go to the catch folder and after this amount of minutes it will be updated automatically. So if you make some change on this page, for example, change this picture, text or even add some new blog post, the user won't see them because the page was catched. And after several minutes that we enter here, the catch will automatically update and the visitor will see all changes. That's why after you add some changes you need to clean catch to allow your users see all your changes immediately. When I am working with a site I prefer disable catch at all. The next group of settings is sessions. Here we can see session handle, data database or file system. By default I recommend to use database. Here in session lifetime I prefer to enter something bigger, for example 90 minutes. What does it mean? For example, you enter the site, you make some settings, add articles and so on, and then you just stop. For example, you go to lunch and so on. After this amount of minutes and if you return after, for example, 91 minute after last action and if you will click somewhere else, you just go here to the login screen. So this means that your session were expired. That's why I prefer to enter not 50 minutes by default, but something bigger, for example 60 or 90. But this is not very good for security reason. For example, if your computer can be reached by other people and you not work with computer in this time, then they can change some settings on your site 
or even the password from it. So you need to decide which option is better for you. By default is 50 minutes. Also there is shared session options. What does it mean? For example, now I log in just in admin panel and I am log out from the front end. But if I enable share sessions and enter to the website again, I will enter to admin panel and to the front end of the site. And if I will log out here, I will automatically log out here. By default, I prefer to not use share sessions. The next tab is server. Here we can see path to temp folder. Temp folder is needed for example to upload some files on the site or even install some extensions. If you have some problems with installing extensions, just go here to system, system information, folder permission and look here. The temp folder need to be writable. So you need to ask your hosting provider what path to the folder you need to specify here. The next option is rep error reporting. Here we can see system default, but I prefer to select none for production site. What does it mean? Sometimes your site can be worked not good as you want and here on the top of the site we can see some errors but it's not very good for users who come to your site and in this way you just disable these messages. But if you need to debug some action I recommend to enter maximum and see what information we will have here. If you have some errors or debug information you will see it. But by default I prefer None. If you already have SSL certificate on your hosting and you wish to use HTTPS and just select enter site. But be careful, if you don't have SSL certificate on your hosting, it, this option can break your site. If you have some problems with, for example, time in the commands, time in the article, you can select your time zone and it can help you to fix problem with the time. There are also database settings, but if you don't know what exactly it is, don't change it, because any changes to these settings can break your site completely. And then you will need go to the Joomla root folder, go to configuration and change database settings here. With these mail settings we already worked in previous video tutorial. On the login tab you can configure login options for any actions, but it, this is for advanced users and in most cases you just don't need them. In text filter, if you don't know what exactly this is, just leave by default and do not worry about them. And with permission tabs, we already work in previous video tutorials. For example, if you want for managers can enter administrator and interface just for managers and this action access administrator interface select allowed. In this way you can change different action permissions for different user groups. But by default I recommend you do not change these settings and just leave them like this. I hope this and other Joomla video tutorials have helped you with this CMS. In the next video tutorial we'll talk about Joomla multi-language and language overrides. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, this is Alexey, see you soon in new tutorials.